I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome to Wednesday with God, the evening uh, Bible study here at Unity Missionary Baptist Church here in Baytown, Texas. Call a neighbor, call a friend. Let them know that Unity Baytown is on the air everywhere. We certainly are appreciative to you joining us this evening or whatever day you're watching as we come together before the, the presence of the Lord to study the Word of God on today. I invite you to grab your pen, grab something to write with, something to write on, take some notes so that you can apply this lesson to the living out of your days. As always, we thank you for those of you who joined us at 12 noon on Wednesday for the sweet hour of prayer as we talk to God. And now at the 7 p.m. hour, we come asking God to talk back to us. So I pray that you would get your Bible, get you something to write with again, something to write on, and write down what, where God speaks to you and apply that to your life. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. Do three things for us as you go throughout this broadcast. Hit the like button. We encourage you to like this. If this is a blessing to you and this word is blessing you, hit the like button, but also comment on it. Are we being a blessing? Are you getting anything from the word? But then share. Share this word with somebody who needs to be blessed just like you. You don't even know what the word of God is, but I trust me, by the end of this lesson, you're going to want to share this with somebody. So make sure you like, comment, share, and tag somebody. Somebody who's on Facebook, tag them. Let them know, hey, you need to check this out. Let this be a blessing to you. Amen? All right. So with that being said and done, uh, we've already talked to God earlier, so let's talk to God again before we get into the lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we come before your presence today. We thank you for what you have blessed us to encounter all day long. Thank you for power. Thank you for provision. Thank you for peace. But ultimately, God, thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would please Open your word to us. Make it crystal clear, God, so that even a child can understand. I pray for those that are, on, that are logging on right now, those that are logged on, and those who are contemplating logging on, that you will give them the word they need for, the, for such a time as this for their life. And God will be so quick and so careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. And it is so. And it cannot be otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you and God keep you. Again, good evening to everyone who is watching us today. We pray that God is blessing you. I pray that you've had a great day. And if you have not had a great day, may your day get better as we begin to go into the word of God. With that being said, let's get into the word. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. We are in a series of message of teachings entitled Reconnecting to God. Reconnecting to God. And we have been talking about a specific subject because in this year here at Unity, I've been trying to impress upon the people that we have to get closer to God. We have to get to a place, beloveds, where church and worship and our walk with God is not just a monotonous, mechanical thing that we do, but that you and I get to the place in God where we have that fervor, that vim, that vitality, the joy that we used to have when we first got saved. Don't ever go through worship as mechanics. Don't just go through the motion. Whatever you walk with God and worship God, let it be from, your, from the heart. Let it be from the sincerity in your spirit. Because you don't just want to give God anything because you don't want God to give you anything. Okay? Psalm 51, verse number 12. And tonight we're reading from the New International Version of the Holy Writ. Psalm 51, verse 12. It says, restore to me 
the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. The word of God for the people of God. We've been talking about reconnecting to God and the subtopic is what disconnects us from God? What disconnects us from God? If we're going to reconnect, we got to find out how do we disconnect, okay? So, uh, our objective is to discover the elements that have contributed to our lack of spiritual attachment to God. Can I ask you a question? And, 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 and you can say yes or no. Either way is fine, because this is you. In some areas, do you feel disconnected to God? You can say yes or no. I mean, nobody's going to, you're in a judgment-free zone. Do you feel in some areas of your life like you're disconnected to God? Can I be honest with you? As pastor, sometimes I do feel disconnected to God because there are some things in my life that I have not done. There are some ways that I have walked. There are some behavior that I have ex exuded that make me feel like, hey, you don't, you're not as close to God as you were. And so it's, it's okay to acknowledge. It's actually healthy to acknowledge that there's a disconnect. What's unhealthy is to say you're disconnected, that you're connected, but you're not really connected. So that being said, many people feel that God is he's a distant authoritarian authori 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 figure who gives us the Ten Commandments to memorize and to live by. Consequently, uh, people are uninspired by this idea. Uh, by the time many people are in their adolescent years, God is nothing more than an afterthought in their life. However, as people study the Bible, they discover that, that, that friendship with God is not only possible, but it is also something that God desires to have with you and I. Oh yeah, this discovery is a game changer, y'all. And for many, it, it marks the beginning of their, their quest to have a personal and spiritual connection with God. Uh, on this journey, you and I continue to learn deeper truths about God that should inspire us and help us spiritually. It helps us spiritually mature uh, for each stage of our lives. So in this study, uh, I, 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 want, I want us to pursue a deeper connection with God. Uh, we'll cover three, we've been covering some questions in these lessons. So we've talked already about one and two. I want to deal with the third of three questions, um, which will help us to unravel our disconnection from God and hopefully start down a path towards an intimate relationship with God, all right? The first time in our first installment of this lesson, we talked about, am I connected emotionally with God? Am I connected emotionally with God? Am I con That's the first one. I want to catch you up. Am I connected? Emo because it's hard to try to say that you are connected with God and there's no emotion. There has to be some sort of emotional connection that makes you want to... Uh, be a, like David, who was a man after God's own heart. You have the heart of God. You don't just want the hand of God. You don't just want what he can give you. You also want to give him something yourself. And so with that being said, we have to learn how to be emotionally connected with God. But then number two, not only should we be emotionally connected with God, we have to ask the second question is, do I see and treat God as a friend? Now see, many people don't, don't, don't look at God as a friend. We don't look at God as somebody who wants to get to know us, who wants to talk to us, who wants to uh, interact with us, to be with us. And that could be further from the truth. God not only wants to be our Savior. He not only wants to be our Lord, 
He wants to be our friend. Yeah. Believe it or not, yeah. God wants to be our friend. I think I told you at the last installment that you and I have a friend request from God. Every day, those of us who are not in relationship with God, he wants to be your friend. Those of us who have accepted him, he is our constant friend. Matter of fact, we are called the friends of God. That's what Abraham was when he accept, when, when he believed God. And, and believing is not just an emotional thing. It is an obedience thing. If I say I'm your friend, I'm going to prove to you that I'm your friend by the actions that I do. I'm going to show everybody else, hey, that's my friend. That's my dog. That's my boy. That's my partner. My ride or die. That's my, that's my, that's my partner. And I'm going to show the world that by the way I act, not only in his presence, but also in his absence. Some people can be your friend in your presence, but the question is, are they your friend in, their, in your absence? All right? So, can we, be, can we treat God as our friend? Can we honestly say that we are doing what it takes to operate as friends with God? God can be our confidence no matter what we face. If you have a friend in God, then God will go with you no matter where you are, no matter who you are, because you and I are the friends of God. Hallelujah. Man, and you do know friendship has its benefits. Yes, it does. Want to know the, the, the benefits of, of friendship? Some of you can attest. If I'm right, say, you're right, Pastor. Comment in the comment section. Say, you're right. You tell your friends what you don't tell your associates. You're right, Pastor. Just type it in the comment section. You're right, Pastor. You tell your friends, some of you tell your friends what you don't even tell your siblings, your blood brother and sister. Come on, I want to hear you. You're right, Pastor. Amen, you're right. Watch this. Some of us tell our friends, but we don't even tell our own mother and father. You're right, Pastor. I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about other folk. You, you say amen, you say you're right, Pastor. Can I, can I go to your father? Some, some, of us, some of us tell our friends some stuff we won't even tell our own spouses. You're right, Pastor. <laughs> you know I am. I'm not, I'm not trying to be arrogant, but because there is a rapport you have with your friends that you don't have with anybody else. That's why the Bible says that there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Got it? So, um, we have that friendly confidence in God. No matter what we say, God won't tell anybody. No matter what we divulge to God, God won't divulge it to anyone else. The only way it becomes somebody else's business is when you tell somebody else. But when you tell God, God will take you to your grave. <laughs> you, you can't say with God, go, we're going to take this to the grave, because God's not, God don't go to the grave. But he'll take your stuff to your grave. Amen? All right. So, with that being said, let's, let's get to the last question. And the last question is, do I connect honestly with God each day? That's the third question. Do I connect honestly with God, not just on Sunday? Because many of us only really connect with God when we come here to worship. And that's a bad, unhealthy connection. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you only eat 
once a week? Yes or no? Come on, let's interact. Do you, do you eat only once a week? Do you only go to the bathroom once a week? Do you only bathe, shower once a week? Some of you, you fill your cars up once a week, but yeah, you don't drive much. But for those of you who drive much, do you only get gas once a week? Especially if you're driving every day. If you don't eat once a week, if you don't go to the bathroom once a week, if you don't bathe once a week, if you don't get gas once a week, why do we only connect with God once a week? God doesn't want a weekly connection. Ooh, I just got something. That's, that's deep. That's real good. A weekly connection with God is a weak connection to God. Woo! Won't you, won't, won't you put that on social media? Tag my name in. Come on, do that for me. A weekly, W-E-E-K-L-Y, connection to God is a weak, W-E-A-K, connection to God. Go ahead, type it. Please make sure you tag me in it. See, my, my pastor said that. Let, let me give it to you again. A weekly connection to God is a weak connection to God. Because God doesn't just want you to connect with him on Sunday. He wants you to connect with him every day. Got it? I became a Christian over 40 years ago. And I remember feeling so inspired that I could talk to God all the time. And you know what I got also got excited about? He would listen to me. Isn't that something? I talked to God, and God would listen to me. However, as time passed, it's been easier for me to lose that sense of inspiration. It happens over time. I can go through, through the actions of prayer and read my Bible regularly, but I miss focus on staying connected to God. Talk about me. I believe it is easy for all of us who have gone to church or read the Bible for years to think we are connected to God when actuality we're not. We can live by some set of rules we know and agree with, but we do not evaluate the level of attachment and enjoyment we have in our relationship with God. We can go through the motions, but we don't have the connection. All right? If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Colossians. Let me show you what I mean. Colossians chapter number 2. Colossians chapter number 2. I want to show us that you can do it by methodology, but have no meaning. Colossians chapter 2. Verse number 19. Colossians chapter 2. Verse number 19. It says, They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ, to the elemental to the elemental spiritual forces of this world. Why as though you still belong to the world, mm, do you submit to its rules? Verse number 22. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules which you have, which have nothing to do with things that are all destined to perish with use are based on mere human commands and teachings. So basically, what we see here, Paul here describes the people who are Christians but have lost connection with God. I ask you the question again, have you lost, your, do you feel like you're disconnected with God? 
Not just in all, some, in some areas do you feel like you're disconnected with God. Similarly, we lose this connection when we try human rules over a God connection. You can't do God's way our way. Got it? When we feel like we have to do everything right spiritually to be accepted, we have lost our connection. When we say yes to everyone because we want to be liked, we have lost our connection. When we are afraid to be honest because of what people think, we are in danger of losing our connection. That was a time last year when, when I, I, well, there were some things I was afraid to talk about. I was afraid to talk about my feelings and sins that I was ashamed of. Talk about me. I'm being transparent. But through some help from some friends, I had a time when we were able to talk about it all. And it really freed me up in my personal life and in my relationship with God. Sometimes when you're disconnected, you got you to gotta be honest enough to say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not connected to God like I was. And I really need to get back to that connection. I really need to get. And then sometimes you got to have an accountability partner. I have some accountability partners that I say, hey, I'm not doing what the Lord told me to do. I need to get connected again. And they steer me on the right path. So check this out. I didn't realize how much I was disconnected. I did not realize how much I'd been disconnected from God. But afterwards, I remember being far more motivated, grateful, and inspired about God than I had been for months. I lost my connection with God when I was living in dishonesty. Mm. Don't forget that. Dishonesty leads to disconnection. Remember that, please. Dishonesty leads to disconnection. What do you mean dishonesty? When you're not honest with yourself. When you and I are not honest with ourselves, then what we're saying is, I know what it is, but I don't want to be connected to God because I'm paying attention to this dishonest way. Am I making sense? Okay. So let me keep moving. I remember I lost my connection with God when I was living in dishonesty. To get our connection back, we have to identify when, when and why we lost it in the first place. After that, just remember that each day is a fantastic opportunity to reconnect. I love that. Because even though you disconnected yesterday, you can connect today. All right? If you have your Bibles, uh, go with me to Matthew chapter 6. Turn me your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. I love this because it's easy. God makes it easy for us to reconnect to him. Don't you like that? You sinned Tuesday. Or you sinned yesterday. But you can come back and restart over again today. Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. And this is the model prayer that Jesus is praying. Jesus says in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So watch this. Your, our, our forgiveness from God is contingent upon how we forgive other people. Now, you can't expect God to forgive you of the stuff you do every day if you're still holding grudges from 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 40 years ago. You don't even remember why they made you mad. You're just still mad at them. Be like Teddy. I think I better let it go. Let it go. Let it go, child. Let it go. Because while you're, you're holding a grudge on somebody else, your Heavenly Father says, you holding the grudge, I'm a whole one too. 
we can connect with God again in prayer when we make the right decisions. Write that down. We can connect with God again in prayer when we make the right decisions. I'll say it one more time. We can connect with God again when we make the right decisions. Before I talk, before I talk with, with, with my wife, I had prayers with God. Uh, I wanted my marriage to grow, and I still do. How afraid I felt in asking God for help and confidence. But afterwards, I felt a sense of joy talking to God, feeling his acceptance and help. We can all experience this every day. In fact, God wants us to. That's what the old saints would say every day with Jesus, the sweeter than the day before. The way you connected with God yesterday, there ought to be a greater connection today. Got it? All right. Don't use prayer as a place to try to use God for help with everything going on in your life. God wants a friendship and is seeking to be close. When we reciprocate, we can have an incredible connection. Let me ask you three questions and then I'm out the door. Here's the first question. When you reflect on your relationship with God, would you say you are enjoying time with him? Or more focused on living the right way and not making mistakes? In other words, are you trying to please people or are you trying to please God? Number two, how often do you enjoy your times with God? Are you doing it just to say, I prayed? Are you doing it just to say, I read my Bible? Are you doing it just to say, you know, I gave him my reasonable service? Or, and then finally, here's the last question. What can you do today in prayer to strengthen your connection with God? What can you do today in prayer to strengthen your connection with God? Talking to God is a great therapeutic thing to do. As a matter of fact, some of you right now, God wants you to talk to him because you don't ultimately have a relationship with and God wants to connect with you. How do I connect with God? How do I establish this time with God? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. There's a connection right there. You have to pray to connect. So, would you like to connect with God? If you're watching me, would you like to connect with God? Would you like God to be, here's my question, is God your friend? Are you a friend of God? You can connect with him by saying yes to his will. I'm going to pray a prayer. As I pray this prayer, I want you to say it with your mouth and believe it with your heart and watch God connect with you. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, I come to you a sinner. I repent of my sin. Come into my life and save me. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He died for my sin and rose from the dead. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me. Guide me. And I will live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'm excited for you because you now made a connection with God where you can now be called the friend of God. But now there's a second connection you need to make. You need to connect with other people who are connected to Christ. That means you need to find you a church home. Find you a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church where Jesus Christ is exalted and the Word of God is explained. I can't think of a better church to invite you to become a part of than Unity Missionary Baptist Church. A church in Baytown where everybody is somebody. No, you don't have to live in Baytown to connect with us. You can be Unity Unlimited. Wherever you are, we'd love to receive you as a brother and sister in Christ. 
the information is now there on your screen as to how you can become a part of this wonderful aggregation of believers. Can I tell you something? We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect Christ who wants to connect with us on a day-to-day -day basis. What are you waiting on? Connect with us today. These people who are watching with you would love to be your brother and sister virtually or in person. I would love it if you would make me your pastor. Can I be your pastor today? You already watch. You enjoy. Why not make it official? Come on. Use the information that you see on the screen today. And once you connect, somebody will call you. Somebody will communicate with you and get you connected with this wonderful congregation. Now watch this. Even if you don't want to become a part of Unity, wherever you want to go, whatever church you would like to become a part of, we'll connect you with that church because we want you to be ultimately connected to Jesus Christ. So don't delay, brothers and sisters. Connect today. I hope you were blessed by the lesson today. I pray that it did something that will cause a change and a connection with you and God. Listen, here's another way you can connect with God. You can connect through your contributions. Yes, you connect it through study of the word and in worship to God. But another way to connect is through contribution. That means you have the privilege of giving your tithes, your offerings, and your love offering to the man of God. The information is right there on the screen as to how you can sow your tithes. You can pay your offering. And if the Lord leads you, you can be a blessing to the man of God, the pastor. Because there, there are three ways that the Lord has allowed us to give. Do know this, that if you give, God promised us. Let me quote to you the word. He that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. He who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. As a man is purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, neither necessity. For the Lord loves a, you got it, cheerful giver. He wants a happy and hilarious giver. So, don't delay, beloveds. Contribute today. If you'd like to be a blessing to the man of God, the information is there as to how you can bless the man of God. Trust God with your finances. That's an act of faith. Trust God with your finances. And watch God open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. I've tried it, and I have the testimony. You can't be God-given, no matter how you try. Amen, amen, amen. Well, our time is up. We hope that you were blessed by the word. We pray that something was said or done to stick to you, and you can go back and look over this and read over this and apply it to your life. We don't do this just to do this. We do this because we want to be a blessing to you. So if, we're been a, if we've been a blessing to you, do three things for us. Hit the like button. Let us know that you like what you've just witnessed. Not only like, but also comment. I pray that you interact with us. We want to know, have we been a blessing? Has this word touched you or helped you in any kind of way? But then finally, Share this with somebody. If you're on Facebook, tag somebody in this. But hit the share button. We want to know that we've been a blessing to you. Like, comment, and share. Well, we have to go. The Lord's will, we pray that you've been blessed. The Lord's will, I want to see you this Sunday in worship. If you think being online is something, it's a million times better in person. So, don't delay. Come, be our guest this Sunday. Until we get back together again, may the rest of your week be the best of your week. The blessings of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Peace and favor.